This video has everything you've ever wanted to know about dry eye. How dry eye feels, why the eyes are dry in the first place, and how to make them feel less dry. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Maria. I'm a Canadian optometrist and vlogger, and the only thing I like more than looking at eyeballs is talking about them. So join me as we delve deep into the common yet complicated condition called dry eye. Okay, first thing we're gonna do. I'm gonna flash some symptoms on the screen. I want you to guess which ones are symptoms of dry eye. Okay, that's a little bit of a trick. If you guessed every single one of them, you are correct. Because that's the thing about dry eye, not every person experiences it the exact same way. So we're gonna do a quick dive into sort of the most common symptoms of dry eye that I see in my practice. If there is a symptom that you have that I miss, definitely let me know down in the comments and I'll try to incorporate it into a future video. One of the biggest symptoms of dry eye I hear all the time is that my eyes feel gritty. They feel like sandpaper, like there's something in the eye. And despite rubbing, 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 just nothing ever comes out. Another super common symptom of dry eye I see all the time is redness. A lot of people actually mistake their dryness for pink eye because the eyes look pink. That's why when you get any sort of red eye, it's really important to go see an optometrist or an ophthalmologist so they can look at the eyes with their magnified equipment and find out why exactly it's red because there are tons of different causes of red eye. Another really common symptom of dry eye I see is that my eyes are watering and tearing. And this one really confuses people because how can your eyes be dry if they're tearing a lot? So the explanation I usually use with my patients is that the reason the eyes are watering is because they're trying desperately to restore some of that moisture that they're missing. But the thing is, they're making this watery moisture, like when you cry, they're not making that thick, oily moisture the eyes actually need to feel better. So the eyes run, 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 but they still feel really irritated. Okay, so now that we know how dry eye feels, let's take a quick look at why the eyes are dry in the first place. There are actually two types of dry eye, and the one that I see most often is called evaporative dry eye. So everyone has these little oil glands located along their eyelashes called meibomian glands. And these glands secrete a protective oil that when you blink, spreads across the front surface of your eyes and provides moisture and protection. What happens in evaporative dry eye is these little glands get clogged. So all of a sudden the eyes are no longer getting enough moisture and aren't getting any of that protection, which causes them to dry out. There are many different causes of meibomian gland dysfunction, but some of the more common ones are age, outdoor environment, medications, and if you wear contact lenses. The second type of dry eye is called aqueous deficient dry eye, and this one's a little bit different. Where evaporative dry eye is that the eyes are drying out because they're not getting enough of that thick oily moisture, Aqueous deficient dry eye is where the eyes just aren't producing enough moisture in the first place. This can happen in one of the most common causes of aqueous deficient dry eye called Sjogren's syndrome. Sjogren's syndrome is an autoimmune condition that targets the lacrimal glands and the salivary glands and can cause both dry eye and dry mouth. Other causes of aqueous deficient dry eye can include HIV, smoking, radiation, and vitamin A deficiency. Okay, so now that we know how dry eye looks and what causes it, let's go down the rabbit hole of how to actually treat it. A good place to start for someone with mild evaporative dry eye are warm compresses. So what you do with warm compresses is you run a face cloth under warm water, you close your eyes and lay it across, and the heat will help open up some of those clogged oil glands so you can get more moisture again. They actually also make special masks that you can heat up in the microwave, which are great because they hold their heat a little bit longer. And there's even one device, which I have, which you plug into the wall and then put over your eyes. So there are lots of different options. Two things to remember. You want warm, not hot. Please don't burn your eyes. Number two, you're looking for about 10 minutes of sustained heat. So that means you want it to be constantly warm for about 10 minutes. Lid wipes are another great tool for dry eye. What lid wipes are is they're a moist towelette with a very, very mild soap that's safe to use near the eyes, and you use them to clean off your eyelashes. It gets rid of dirt, debris, bacteria, all that stuff that can kind of inflame the eyes and make them feel more dry. Artificial tears can be helpful with both the evaporative and aqueous dry eye. Artificial tears are composed of a chemical kind of similar to your natural tears. So when you put the drop in, it's restoring some of that moisture that your eyes aren't naturally getting, either because the glands are clogged or your eyes just aren't producing enough of that moisture. But be sure to stay away from drops that say they get the red out of your eyes. These drops will make your eyes look nice and white, 
but they might not actually have any ingredients in them, which help the eyes feel better. They can also cause a ton of other problems in the eyes, which would probably take an entire other video to talk about. So if that interests anyone, definitely let me know. There's actually some quite promising research regarding omega-3s and dry eye, with the thought being that increased omega-3s improves your meibomian gland production and helps reduce evaporative dry eye. Many types of fish like mackerel and salmon have high levels of omega-3, so if you love fish, fantastic. For vegans and vegetarians, flaxseed, chia seeds, walnuts, and soybeans also have very high levels of omega-3. And for picky eaters like myself, great news, omega-3 also comes in supplement form. <laughs> now, the research still isn't 100% conclusive as to whether or not omega-3s make a difference, so I would love to hear your thoughts. If you've ever tried omega-3s for dry eye, did you find they help, didn't you? Definitely let me know. Okay, continuing down the rabbit hole, let's look at some medical treatments that can help your dry eye. So one tool which is used to help with dry eye is called a punctal pluck. So the puncta is located kind of like right here in the eyes, and it's the passageway that the tears drain through to get out of your eyes. So literally punctal plugs, it's a little tiny device, it plugs the puncta so those tears stay on the surface of your eye for longer. Another tool which I had to include because it's just so satisfying, especially if you love those pimple popper videos on the internet, is the meibomian expression tool. So literally, it's a device that's used to squeeze the meibomian glands to help clear out those clogged oil ducts so the eyes get more moisture. Do not try that at home. Definitely go to an optometrist if you're interested in having that done. There is actually a medical drop which can help with dry eye as well called cyclosporin. How cyclosporins work is they block T cell activation and T cells can cause more inflammation and dry eye. Now this treatment can actually help with aqueous deficient dry eye as well because it improves the tear production. Now some of you dry eye sufferers who have had this for a long time are probably thinking, I've heard this all before, but what out there is new in the world of dry eye? Great news, tons of stuff. There's a lot of new technology that claims to be more of a semi-permanent solution for dry eye. Radiofrequency is a procedure where they heat up the oil glands of the eye to around 40 degrees Celsius. And this reduces the clogged oil glands and also improves collagen production. A nice added bonus is this actually also improves fine lines and wrinkles. A similar procedure is called intrapulse light therapy. And if you've ever had laser hair removal, it's very similar technology. What they do with this procedure is they zap a high intensity light at the oil glands to help liquefy them and clear out all that clogged oil. The biggest downside of this procedure is it can only be used with certain skin tones. The thing about dry eye treatment is it's not one size fits all. Everyone has different symptoms, everyone responds differently to different treatment options. The best thing to do is work with the optometrist, come up with a plan that you can then tailor to find what's working and find what's not working. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you like my content. Also be sure to check out my blog, just ithings.ca and my various other social media accounts at Dr. Maria Coward. I post funny videos, I post informational videos, they're usually short and sweet. And yeah, thank you so much for watching.